let's make some magic okay. here. All right, everybody just... All right, here we go. Ready? One, two... Hmm? Ah! Welcome to the show. My name is Alex. I'm Lizzie. And our special guest is <laughs> Bob Mann, a.k.a. Frank. And thank you so much for plan. You know, I know there was a lot of planning going into this episode, and <laughs> I know you have a very busy schedule. And thank you for taking the time. I think we called you like, what, an hour before we were recording, and you still have the time. Yeah, thankfully, thankfully, it's two in the morning here in Atlanta, Canada. And so I'm free and it's, it's the long night, like in, in, uh, just like in true detective season, season four, it's like all it's nighttime all the time. So we have nothing else to do. We're just sitting at our computers and waiting to, waiting to talk to people. Well, I I am just saw that episode last night. Did you guys ever see 30 days of night? You know, I think I did. I think I did many years ago. Yeah. I still love many it. years ago, but are you talking about the, the episode of, of true detective? No, no, I did see, um, I saw episode one last night of true detective. I'm yeah. in love. Yeah. But me there's too. a horror movie. Um, Josh Harnett stars in it, but huh. it's set up. It's set in Alaska in town that has oh, yeah, 30 right. days of night. And it's the same sort of thing where it's set around the big, long, after the sunset, the big one. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and vampires cool. set in. Well, before we get into all that good stuff, yeah. I just Sorry. wanted to get back to like why we're here, if you don't mind. Um, we are going to be talking <laughs> season one, episode three, choosing day, and this is part of our rewatch series. But before we do that, folks, if you are into the podcast, obviously you must be, and you're into Bob Mann and all the other stuff that we do, hit that subscribe button and give us a review. And if you liked us, it's Alex. And if you don't, it's not Alex. Um, yeah. It's Randall. Um, that said, <laughs> hopefully we will actually get this done sometime tonight. I know it's not Sunday, but we like to say Sunday is from day. And yeah. although I don't have my shirt, you can always go to our Etsy store, which is the what is from shop and get your shirts, your mugs and anything else you want to do. Um, that said. Uh, what's your name again? Lizzie. I'm sorry, Lizzie. I totally <laughs> like true <drew a> freaking <laughs> blank. <laughs> It's the work, we get the working relationship has transcended names, and now yeah, it's just pretty vibe. much. It's just um, a vibe between you. It's yeah. We just vibe. We don't speak at place. all. It's we just kind of grunt right now because it's so <laughs> goddamn cold in New Jersey. Oh, uh, wow. I mean, yeah, and is. Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, like, 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 dude, it's not negative, but I know one thing. I don't like. We like to go hiking, yeah. and I don't like to hike when it's like not near my age and right. I'm 52. So in the forties, maybe even thirties, but when yeah. we get into the twenties and the teens, I'm sorry. I, I don't do that. And when yeah. it's so cold out that it's like, I have a friend of mine who's who also uh, lives in Quebec outside of Quebec city. And she's like telling me it's negative, whatever Celsius. And I'm like, when you got negatives going on, I'm sorry. I, I that's not for me. Yeah, it's a frame of reference that did, but the you know the negative the negative Celsius is 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 your like twenties the hot, low. I understand, low. but still, yeah. I don't want to need negativity in my weather. You don't want it. it's a psychological shift that does no good things for you. Yeah, well, it's yeah. interesting. It's my, I mean, you know, we have it's pretty mild here in wow. Nova Scotia. They're filming wow. from season three as we speak. Yeah. And they're outside sometimes, and I got a whole bunch of friends are there and standing so to talk to, and people that are just none of them. And I'm like, "What's going on? Are you guys doing stuff outside?" They're like, "Yeah, we're doing stuff outside. It's 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 cold for outside, but it's still doable. We're uh, pulling it off." Now, have you had a lot of snow? 
Not really. No, like a, a few bits, a few dustings of snow here and there. Uh, there was we probably had one significant snowfall back in December, and that's it. Because wow. I would love to see like from in the snow. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just would have loved to see what would happen with these monsters. And yeah. I know you can't tell us anything because you don't know anything. I don't know anything. Just make make stuff up and, and nobody's going to know the difference. It's just the three of us. Yeah, um, that make... being said, let me yeah. just get back to the, the, what we're uh, doing? Question, yeah, the question at hand focus. is, what is your first thoughts, Lizzie? And I ask you that first because you were in it, uh, Bob. So I, I just want to ask her first because it's our show. Well, I also don't expect that um, Bob just watched the episode. So um, <laughs> you didn't. But I, but I, but you know, I, I am, I, it's, it's the script though. I mean, in terms of the script and the episode, it's, it's the one I'm most familiar with. It has not to jump on Liz's bit here, but I, I do know that like, from my perspective, I remember reading the scripts and, and kind of thinking, oh, the third episode is when, a first initial kind of arc of what this place is all about kind of comes home. Right. And, and I think I said this when I was on the first time, um, not only is the scene of the choosing ceremony, the, the first time you kind of see most of everyone there in one place, when right. that scene was filmed, it was the first time that everyone was together in one place in I the cast. I do remember wow. you saying that. Yeah. And I also, yeah. I, I think, didn't Harold give you guys like a pretty amazing speech uh, at that point? Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. I, I thought maybe you had said something like that. So I, I think, could be I making think, up. I think it was Jack I was referring to who gave a really cool speech um, uh, when when we were filming what was then my last scene, which was the, at the, the swing. Right. Uh, uh, the, the, my daughter's swing. But the, but the, the but, one, I guess one of the interesting things about it is that there was a sense, like Liz Saunders, it was her first day on set. Jesus. Like, and, and, and she said that to me. She said that to me. I just assumed that everybody were good. They knew each other and everybody was, I remember chatting with her and saying, so, you know, have you been fine? She's like, this is my first day. Like, this is my first time out. And, and, and it wasn't my first day, but I, I was, uh, I was kind of shocked because I, it, I realized in that moment that, it was in this episode, the shooting of the scenes of this episode, that really people were starting to figure out what the dynamics were and and what kind of the tone of the show was going to be. And some of that you figure out in real time. And it, uh, I just felt very privileged to be there I, for some I, of that. I, it was, it was to, very cool. Yeah, I, I really have to say this is one of my favorite episodes, and it's one of my it's one of the episodes I don't like watching because it's so emotional. And I know yeah, I just got it. Yeah. I mean, I I'm kind of taking your first thoughts first, but I, I just, I hadn't watched it in a while, obviously. And I mm -hmm. watched it and I didn't, you know, we were going to go through all the episode and she had said, this is the, this is his episode. And I'm like, I thought it was next week, meaning the fourth. Uh, episode but i remember why you were in it sort of um yeah, after, yeah, right at the beginning but yeah but oh. but it, it's just it really brings it home and and there's a lot of questions that people outside of from really need to look at you know these bigger questions and you know where, where how do you want to live your life how do you want to do all these how, how do you want to where do you want to live and how do you want to live? I mean, yeah. you know, you went through a journey and, but anyway, uh, Miss Liz, wh what do you, wh what's your first thoughts? I think you just covered it all. I, and both of you really, because this encapsulates what the show is like a day in the life when you actually live every side, like you see every scene um that someone's going to experience so um you know i my two favorite things i think in this episode is watching jade encounter the town yeah. under the assumption that it is an extreme escape room and i loved it but i also when bob not bob when Frank's monologue for 
one I really, really loved a lot. But when he is in the box at the end of the episode and the monsters are coming up and he's looking out and, you know, he's seeing the faces and, you know, when we get there, you could maybe tell us what Frank was thinking possibly or what your mindset was for him. Oh, yeah. Um, it was oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I do I do actually have an interesting thing to talk about at that yeah. scene that I don't think we talked about when when I was here before that that uh, just occurred to me. Yeah. Um but I'll save it. I'll save it. Yeah, Please. That's great. And and that's another reason, you know, it, you know, we're doing this rewatch and it would be nice if we could have certain people come on so that you know, I don't know, like honor honor their effort in a particular episode. And, you know, when I was thinking about it, I was like, I think we would be remiss if we didn't invite Bob back on um, to have him hopefully want to share this with us. And possibly now that there's a couple of other thoughts that at least I have, um, you know, Maybe you can give me your thoughts, whatever they are. Sure. You know, whether I'm on, off, or like, what are you talking about? Well, it so, is always interesting to rewatch an episode of a show, you know, that's a mystery box episode, you know. Um, I think I, I think I said at some point in one of our conversations that... Um, uh, the show Lost has been one of the shows that I've rewatched a number of times with with each of my kids as they come as, as they get to a certain age, and every time watching it from the beginning, you're seeing things and picking up picking up new things in the context of how you know the story goes. Right, exactly. You're hearing, you know, you're hearing that moment in episode two when one of the characters basically summarizes the entire show. Yeah, which which yeah. feels it seems so innocuous and and you know not very weighty when you first see it, but then going back and watching again, you're like, oh wow, they they yeah. g- they gave us they gave us some pretty big macro long long range hints off the top, and um, I've I've cert- I've certainly watched the the first few strokes of from in the same way, going, huh, I wonder if there's going to be something someone says or a bit of dialogue or an exchange between two people that, that, that actually, you know, for foretells the, the, the long range arc. I don't know, like, it, uh, you know, who knows, but it's an interesting exercise. It is. And, um, there, there's definitely, and I actually, when we get to scene 15, I actually circled the word lost hmm. because there was something about that, but, um, as we're going through this, we can acknowledge that, you know, we've watched all the way through the second season, but also um, in light of that, having that, you know, basis that we can look at this differently and catch something we didn't catch before. And I definitely have some of those things going on. So why don't we, why don't we get into, uh, the cold open sure yeah let's do it uh, all right, right. bob just, you're up just start and fire into it when the okay. show opens when the show opens we're treated to a nice little um uh, uh tableau of colony house and we're moving through colony house and we see the kind of stuff that people get up to when they're just hanging out chilling at colony house stuff like they're smoking people smoke cigarettes darts as we call them here in uh here in nova scotia oh, wow. in colony house you see some people hanging out having sex with each other right out in the open there are no rules at colony house you just do you just do you at colony house and it's it can be jarring depending on your uh sensitivities uh mm-hmm. of course there's lots of sleeping going on including yeah. the matthews family who who have had a hell of an ordeal just a bucket of syrup of a time and they're exhausted. They're sleeping, but Tabitha is sleeping fitfully because she's dreaming about the events that have led them up to this point. Hammering on the door, trying to get into Colony House, uh, seeing the monsters, not knowing what the hell is going on, and she's probably uh, uh, low-key traumatized 
on on some level. Uh, and then uh, Kenny's gunshot wakes her up, jars her out of her sleep. She sees Julie sleeping. She's having a hell of a panic, and Jim comforts her, and and that gives us a sense of where this uh, beleaguered family is finding themselves uh, at this point in the story. I don't know if there's anything you want to comment about there, but I, I to me, this is just some bit of place setting yeah. to, to bring yeah. us to speed uh, as, as to what's going on with these folks. Agreed. I mean, I, I, I love this because, yeah, it is a lot of place setting. We really don't know anything about Colony House. No. Except for they have guns. The guy at the front door won't open it. There's yep. Adam yep. and Ellis, and, and Donna runs the show. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all we got. And then the next day, you know, it's like the 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 headache after the party. Yeah. For all <laughs> we know, for all we know, this is like a, a frat house or it's uh, you know, answer me these questions three to get in the front door. You don't know. We don't know right. what what the what the deal is here with this thing. We just know that we were in a town and now there's this old Victorian cool mansion up in the up in the middle of a field, which is, you know, again. I I do I do think that the place setting of showing us what people do in Colony House kind of gives us a sense of the the dichotomy, which I think turns out fairly quickly to be a false dichotomy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really it's it's really only kind of a notional that Colony House is where you go to live life to the fullest and and enjoy enjoy the debauchery of the senses. While uh, while the good Christians live down in the town, like that, it doesn't it doesn't really play out that way. No. no. Well, what's interesting about that whole dichotomy is, to your point, they do have a lot of rules. Yeah, and they have yeah. very strict rules. It's yeah. just everything. Once you're inside those walls, anything goes. It's yeah. just you know, you have I mean, to be able to get in those walls. Yeah, and yeah. and I, I there's there's a lot of good things, you know. I keep going back to, and I, I said this I think in the last two episodes, Donna. I think last season said it was either last season. Um, she said everybody gives Colony House this the bad rap, but yeah. you know what? One, we're a family, and two, you know, we live life a certain way. Yeah. And and that's all we do. It's not that it's better or worse. We just, you know, it, it's not as it's not as crazy as you think. Yeah. And and I don't think, you, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think Donna would allow it to be that crazy because she's she's pretty an old curmudgeon, so to speak, in a yeah. lot of ways. So she's not going to put up with that crap. But so, sure, surely, surely, though, the show demonstrates and, you know, you look ahead to the two seasons. Surely the show demonstrates that. Colony House is worse, isn't it? Like the the place is only ever going to be as secure as your laziest or or most unpredictable person. And if you Absolutely. if you put twenty people in a place, you're raising the possibility and the probability that someone in there might get a little unhinged, or they're going to be sloppy, yeah. or they're not going to know. Whereas if it's just you and your family, if it's just four of you living in a house or a couple of two or something like that, you can be like, okay, unless you got an alcoholic dude like Frank, who's who who's, doesn't know, who doesn't know how to use some nails. Yeah, doesn't uh, hammer the window shut or whatever. Like, okay, but I for have the most a, part, yeah. I have a a question for you. Yeah. How long what do you think Frank and his family were in from? Oh, it's so good. I, my, uh, I, I think when I was, I believe when I was sort of, you know, and I wasn't doing like a deep history or anything like that. No, no, I'm, no, yeah. I'm an, I, you know, I'm an actor that kind of looks at the text and draws everything I have from the text and, and a lot of the background history work that's sort of hypothetical and not informed by what you're reading. Uh, it doesn't help me all that, all that much a lot of the time, but, um, one thing that did occur to me, though, was that um, they were they've been they've been there long enough that he's kind of lost hope, and See, and yeah. and lost lost a bit of like aim. I pictured them as being a, a a family a little bit more, and I actually think this is informed by the narrative. I think what you're meant to understand is that uh, Frank's family is perhaps when they showed up at 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 Fromville they were maybe a little bit more like the Matthews family. Yeah. 
And the reason I ask that what can happen, you're seeing what can happen to people if they get broken down and lose hope. His wife clearly does. She's she seems to be doing just fine. Right. Yeah. But but it, that does fly a little bit in the face of how long they got away with having the windows not nailed shut. It sort of implies that it's a new problem. But but I, I think they've yeah. been there for a while. I think they've been yeah. there like a couple of years. The only yeah. reason I ask is I, I take question with your wife. Like, why the hell didn't she nail the freaking windows? And again, yes, I'm not, you know, I mean, it's just, I know there's no answer for it, but it's just like, it's so it. annoying because you go in the box yeah, for that and she's just as guilty. And yeah, a man protects his family. Get that. Yeah. Totally right. But dude, yeah. a mom protects his do- her daughter. Yeah. And. And and that that you, really made me mad. That really I'll made tell me you mad. This, my friend Ann Doyle, who plays my wife on the show, has never once expressed an iota of remorse or accepted any responsibility for what happened to our pretend fake characters. And you know something? I, 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 I've always been hurt. Yeah. You should be. You have every yeah. right to be hurt. Thank you. Oh my Thank God. You, He's responsible for your death. I feel very and, sick. And Bob, I was just yeah. gonna try to get her and your and your your poor daughter oh, to come yeah, on yeah. and to, to surprise you. And um it's not that gonna happen, tough. unfortunately. But oh, I think it that. would be like more of like a Jerry Springer type of thing where <laughs> yeah. what is your problem, woman? Yeah, surprise. <laughs> and Frank, and Frank, Frank is Frank is not the father. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. the whole problem. <laughs> Maybe she no, dropped but, that bomb when you got honestly, there, and yeah, you yeah. know, no right. wonder and, and, you felt hopeless. All right, so let's go on to Jade. Yeah. Let's move on. So what? What Sorry, goes on? We'll be, we'll be talking about that for hours. Yeah, Jade. Jade wakes up. Jade wakes up in his room. He's all tied up and stripped because he was. I mean, he was a whirling dervish. Like he yeah. was just causing all kinds of problems. Who knew what the hell this guy was going to get up to? He's he's nuts as a bag of hammers at this point in the story. <laughs> so Don has got him all strapped down to the bed because you don't know. He'll break stuff. He'll, I don't know, he'll steal uh, what's his name's peaches. So she's got him all tied up. And, and, and she basically says to him, listen, there's more going on here than what you think. And he's like, this is nuts. This is crazy what's going on. Let me out of this bed. So uh, she, she. Yeah, he demands that she unlock him, and she's like, "No, no way." And and then of course he plays the whole. Well, listen, I'm someone important. I'm a big. <laughs> You're wheel. one of them. You're I'm one of one, them. Yeah, I I'm wonder one, if I'm, Donna knew who he was. Well, I mean, we're not a hundred percent sure. Like, is he supposed to be? I I mean, I guess at this point in the story, we're we're meant to understand that maybe he's like. A Bill stand, Gates kind of guy. Stand, well, I no, I don't think a Bill Gates kind of guy because he'd be. Like to me, that's a little too big. Like I, th- I think okay. maybe he's Sam Bankman Freed before he was Sam Bankman Freed. Like some, okay. something like that, right? Like he's on, he's on the verge of becoming maybe some kind of tech. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he's the Waz like, before uh, Waz became the Waz. Yeah, like something like that. I think that's what it's meant to be. And and again, you know, we don't know how time works, right? So maybe he's been a big deal out in the world for a couple of years. But maybe only a month has passed in Drumville. We we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Right. There's an interesting question. A, a total side note for the um the viewers. If they do get out, if mm. they do get out, what will time be? Meaning, will they go back to when it was? Will it I mean it's just a something Ugh. to throw out there. All right. Yeah. So all right, let's let's get through. We're Jay. never getting through this episode. Okay. I swear to God, so we had better get about. through this episode. There's so much to think about. Okay, I'll I'll try to go a little bit. I'll try to go a little bit faster. So <laughs> no, it's not you. It's Alex. It's yeah, my fault great, this time. I mean, one one of the great things about this moment, though, in the episode, is that when Jade pulls the whole "Listen, don't you know who I am?" Uh, Donna's reaction really does underscore this attitude that exists in the town of like it doesn't matter who you were before you got here. You're here now. Yeah. You're here now, and we're all we're all on the same we're all in this together, same playing field, which which you know creates a bit of tension for Jade that takes him basically the entire episode 
to uh, to let go with. He, he still kind of walks around with this sense of like, I have a special sense of entitlement for no other reason that I think this is a game and everyone else is an actor in it. And this is all for my benefit. It's, it's so narcissistic. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But it, so it's fun. This episode, you get to see him kind of reduced down to, to the, everyone's love. And then we cut to Boyd. Poor Boyd waking up in his little, um, you know, uh, Dickensian cot in his uh, in his sheriff's slash post office, uh, which is just so charming. And uh, he goes and checks on his uh, his his cell dude, and and it's poor Frank. And uh, Frank is he lo- checks out the box. You know, the 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 box is sort of foreshadowed. It's it's going to loom large over this episode, and. Uh, Checks with Frank and poor Frank has just been reduced to a shell of a man and uh, tells him, t- says, no, I don't want anything. And then tells him that, you know, Lauren, Lauren always liked him. Lauren always liked uh, uh, the sheriff because she thought he was going to get everyone out of here. But so much for that. Wah, wah. And, uh, you know, that the, the whole thing went to shit. But then uh, then Frank does tell does tell Boyd that he wasn't always like that. Tells Boyd that things used to be different, and uh, and that there is one thing he'd like to do before uh, b- before before the whole thing gets gets wrapped up because we all know what's coming. And that's the end of that. That's the end of that first little stretch. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I think that you know he he really does. He, you know, Frank really sets the table for what happens to him, and he he tries to he's trying to redeem himself, but I think basically he's just like I'm done. I mean, I just want to go home. Yeah, well, yeah what's the what's the point, right? What's like, there's the no. I mean, you still and, you still you still don't have you still don't know you still don't have a sense. You know, you you have a sense that he's got to go in the box because it's already been introduced as a concept, but you're you're not sure how it's gonna play out. This is the this is the dead man walking slash law and order episode where it's sort of like, well, is this the kind of town where we send a guy to his death or, or do we play it a different way? This is the prototype. Yeah. Right. This, this is, this is, and we don't know that off the top. We don't know that until later on in the episode, but the box has not been employed. Yet. No, it hasn't As been in play. Yeah, that's right. So that's important. Uh, and then we cut back up to Colony House, and uh, Donna's sitting with Jade, having a come to Jesus moment, where she's trying to <laughs> trying trying to talk him through the business, and uh, and and he he begins with one of my favorite lines in a in any movie or television show, where you're meant to understand that someone has just been told something, and it's when a character says. So let me see if I've got this straight. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that, uh, it, you know, like it, it's such an effective thing in a, in a TV show. It's, 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 it summarizes well, it, it's efficient, it cuts down, but I don't know that I've ever in my life, frankly, said something to someone or had something told to me. And then, and then either one of us followed it up with, so what you're trying to tell me is, and then basically repeat what it is that exactly. Wait a minute, wait a, a minute. Yeah. But Bob, you have kids, yeah, and you must have caught at least one of them doing something, and they tell you the story, and then you're like, "So you're telling me?" Yeah, I, su- I, su- I suppose. Yeah, I suppose that <laughs> that's maybe a real. No, your kids are perfect, right? Just like yeah, I've never daughter. had to do that, Liz. Like I've they seen just... the pictures; they are perfect. Yeah, we're gifted communicators in this yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, we just make everything work on the first round because we don't got time to ha- yeah. rehash it. Right. Yes, well, you exactly. guys are from Canada. You're like the nicest people in the world. Nothing. Yeah, we're just nice on. to each other, and and everyone listens carefully. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically, this is the you know this is the summary moment where Jade's like so. So you're telling me this, that that's what this is. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. That's the, that's the size of it, buddy. And uh, Jade looks around at people and he's like, is this for real? And, you know, Ellis or whatever. They're like, yeah, yeah, this is for real. Sorry. Um, That's what you're stuck in. And that's when Jade has the idea that like, ah, that, (laughs) that Toby, what a clever, what a slippery, slippery fish uh, set up this elaborate, birthday party 
uh, Michael Douglas, Sean Penn-esque game, Rube Goldberg for me to escape from. And I guess I'm going to have to solve the mystery of I, the I, mysterious town. <laughs> I love the best part is Ellis is like, do you want me to go after him? And Donna is like, no, just let him go to town. Bro. Let him go. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen to him? His wires are going to fry, but let him go. At least we don't got to look at his, his hairdo anymore. Like just oh let him God. Let him go. Yeah, I just I this- love his excitement through the whole thing, and then I'm thinking, I'm looking at him, and he's got like a Beach Boys shirt on. Yeah, like the Beach Boys Oxford, like you know, a boy of summer, like he's, he's fresh there off to play. the boat. He's yeah. fresh off the boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. So he comes out. So he leaves the house. You know, it's like ah, oh, sunlight. What is this all about? And. uh and and he 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 checks out uh, some stuff that's going on. I see a note here. This is really fun. So Jade sees a sculpture, and he comments, "It's not quite his Giamatti. Is that <laughs> did I pronounce that right, Giamatti? Giamatti? I don't know. A, a I've never story. heard of the guy. I just I figured I'd look it up and yeah, fun fun up. fun little footnote for the yeah. for the re for the listener because this is these are the kind of details that may hold the secret to deciphering. This show, so I'm I'll tell you right little... now, hey, Bob. Bob, it yeah. will in in Lizzie's eyes, everything is important. Yeah, <laughs> until it's, it's the key. Not. <laughs> it's the key. Is that sculpture? Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, you know, the, but but in, in not for nothing, you know, and I can't remember who where everyone is in terms of lost. You know, we keep going back to that yeah. example, but like you know, there's a character in that show whose name is John Locke. Yeah. And then and then later on, he assumes this the pseudonym of Jeremy Bentham. And unless you've studied philosophy and 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 you've gotten familiar with some of those works, I mean, that's just going to it's just going to go right over your head. They're just names. Right. 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 Once right, you right. know that those names are taken from uh, philosophers uh, you know, around the time of the enlightenment or whatever, then, then, then you start to understand, Oh, there's something else going on with this show. Like that, that's not accidental that's in there on purpose. And it's shedding some kind of light on what sort of attitude or what, or what, what kind of issues that the show is kind of touching on. It is kind of an er early, it's an early hint, right? It's an early giveaway that, 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 that there's something more informing it, but um, Alberto Giamatti, uh, uh, it says here is one of the most important sculptors of the 20th century. His work was particularly influenced by artistic styles such as cubism and surrealism. And if you find, oh, if you find Fromville, uh, and it's shenanigans and goings on either surreal or cubic, then yeah. perhaps there is some, I don't know what cubic means. I just threw that out there that, but perhaps there's some relationship uh, between this this 20th century sculptor and and from I don't know maybe the whole place is sculpted. But uh, what does he see? He sees Clara riding her bike, oh. takes it from her because it's his. Any everything here is his for the taking. He take whatever yeah. the hell he wants, right? Yeah. This is it. This is an escape room for him to play in, and uh, she's she's kind of surprised by this <laughs> and taking it back because that's not a thing that happens. And then, you know, it's not a motorized scooter that he's accustomed to or a hoverboard, but he just takes it and he just scampers off like a little scallywag to explore the hints and clues of the town. And and there it is. We have. Uh, yeah. I'm not a aware. World. Do you know that we have had two contests at each of at the end of each of the seasons. Yeah. Right. Where we ask people to draw a scene from the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Someone drew that. Beautiful. And it is so good. Yeah. It's just so good. I'll I'll send you a picture of it, but Yeah, I want to see it. Class Class Warfare comes to Fromville oh. via Jade. Yeah, they nailed the whole feeling. Yeah. Of is what your, happened. Your game yeah, it's on it's in our it's in our intro and it's also on our uh uh YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah, as well. Yeah, awesome. We'll send you. We'll send you a better picture. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Might I say it is inspiring? What a kick-ass escape room experience that would be! Like, have you ever I mean, come on, 
have you ever done an escape room? Like where you go yeah. in the room and things are hidden, there's keys in little bottles and you got to solve yeah. a little, you know, uh, a Rubik's cube and that unlocks the thing. Imagine a whole town. That would I be know. awesome. It would be awesome. It'd be it crazy. would be awesome. But yeah. I would ruin it for myself because I get so deep into my head yeah. that I'd be freaked out. Yeah. And the okay. one escape room I went into, I was just like, this isn't real. This is <laughs> yeah. through the whole and thing. And then it's me, real. I'd still they'd have to say, dude, we're closing. The key's right there. Get out. <laughs> you'd be you'd be wandering around the town, just sort of not sure what's going on. And Liz would still be on the bus studying the upholstery of the scene. <laughs> Pretty much. Like there's something about the weave. There's in something the, in about the seams weave. of the seats that bear, yeah. uh, holds the clue. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> That's right. Let's get back so, to the Matthews. And back to, back to the show. We go, we go back to the Matthews family, the poor Matthews family, who've who've just wow, what a roller coaster ride. Um, and poor poor Ethan, he's he's all banged up. He got a he <laughs> got an old timey spear through the leg or whatever that was that he got impaled by, and yeah. and he looks out the window and who does he see? I think maybe for the first time in the show we see the boy in white. Out that there. was the second time. Was this second the time? second? Yeah, because okay. he said yeah, he saw him at the end of the night before. Ah, okay. And he wakes up, and the kid's still there. Okay. Yes. Can I just say something about this real quick? Yeah. Isn't it kind of a little creepy the way he looks at this kid? Like the way Ethan was, looks at him. Yeah, he's just kind of like it's kind of like he's almost looking like your kid would on YouTube, just kind of like zoned out. Yeah. And the he boy in white. Is, zoned out. And then the boy in white isn't looking like he's looking a little freaky too. Yeah. yeah. Cause he's a boy it's, in white and he's, it's almost boy. like, it's almost like neither boy has see, ever seen another boy before. Kind of, yeah. you know? Yeah. They're right? so like, Oh, I thought I was the only one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the boy in white just kind of waves and smiles. Yeah. Like, he's like, it's hey. not like, no, like but he's that. like, he's he's like I see you. Not. Yeah. I see you. I see you. Therefore, you are. And yeah. Ethan is like in a Descartesian kind of way. And then Ethan is kind of like, I see you, but I'm not sure if therefore you are. This is all new to me, and I'm I'm not. I mean, I think you're real. Like yeah. I, I think he, I think he sort of takes for granted that he's that he's real. Everyone's taking. I, I really new. wish. I really wish this was a more popular show, and it could be on Saturday Night Live, where they could have the, the boy in white doing different things. Like I got to go to the bathroom, or I, I you know, brings yeah. out food, or you know, <laughs> I can see a whole skit with this. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or he needs a he needs a nap. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. So Ethan sees the boy in white, and he's just like, "Oh, interesting. I'll log that away in my head for a future reference, and not say yeah. anything to my family that does not validate anyone's feelings at this point in the yeah. story, which is one of their big challenges." So yeah. uh, Ethan wants to go outside and play, you know, because he's a kid and he's also made a new friend. So he wants to go outside and uh, and 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 hang out and maybe play. I don't know, throw rocks at birds or something. And Tabitha says no. You got to stay in bed because your leg got impaled by uh by a I don't know footstool leg or whatever it was. Something like, like that, yeah. Um, Ethan, you know, Ethan, he's, he's just a dumb kid, so he starts complaining right off the bat. He's like, these pajamas are too itchy. Uh, you know, Julia comes in and saying, you know, like oh, I don't like people going through my stuff. This place sucks. People were having sex out in the <laughs> couch. Yeah. I don't know if she says that, but surely she saw it. And, yeah. And Ethan, they were like, right here. Yeah, yeah, it like they're like right there. The I mean, honestly, yeah. that is an image you just can't get rid of. No, for no. a while. I don't yeah. know who those. I don't know who those people were too. I don't know who they got to do that. I, I, I really, I never bothered to look into it. But presumably, it's a couple of background actors that they just pulled aside and said, "Hey, listen, we got a fun. We got we some, got... We got some interesting things for you today." I don't know if that's how it worked. I have no clue. I, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. You, you, no you, I, I did hear, I did hear on the wire that you did try to apply for that particular job, though. Yeah, on the on the list, I went in. Yeah, so I did a, a good good self tape for that. <laughs> but no, oh didn't God. even get a didn't even get a call back for the, yeah. for the sex scene. Damn. No. <laughs> yeah. No. 
That's probably that's pro- it's probably the only other scenario under which my mother would say, "Yeah, I don't think I can watch that show." <laughs> like I know, I know you're in it, and I and I hear it's it's cool, and people are talking yeah. about it, but I don't think I can watch it. Like really, no. getting getting killed by monsters or having sex on a couch in front of a bunch <laughs> of people. That's probably it. Those are probably the two. Those are the two deal breakers. Oh for, my god! For fandom. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad that you you have well defined. Uh you know <laughs> rules with your mom yeah so you just right. know what the so, boundaries are yeah. so 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 uh right. yeah so the kids I are like the kids are the kids are like this place sucks how long are we going to be here what is going on we we got to take off because these clothes are too itchy um and and tabitha says we're figuring it out don't worry pump your brakes kids mom and dad are going to figure these things out even though mo- we don't know this yet but mom and dad have passed the point of trying to figure things out. They have they have called it quits, and no one knows this yet. So that's a neat yeah. little bit of stuff to reflect Brilliant. on now that you know the deal with them. Um, but anyway, they're hungry. Ethan, Ethan, <laughs> I love this note. Ethan wants hobo eggs. Is that when you cook them in a plastic bag in water? I, I thought it was. When, I, no, I thought it was when a hobo freshly lays eggs. I thought that that's what that was. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I, no I don't know what hobo eggs are either. I don't know what they are either. No. Um, but no. I'm going to nitpick a little bit because we're in no, the please. second episode. Third. Um, and third. we're trying to learn about no the third episode. We're trying to learn about where this family has landed. And you do get a clue that something is off because we know that their all their clothes are back in the RV because Jim has gone back to get them. Right. Ethan's in pajamas and he's complaining that they're itchy. And I think the three of us are old enough to remember those kinds of pajamas because if you look at the style... They're and 70. then you see the cowboys on them. Remember your flame oh, yeah. retardant pajamas when they first came out? And they were kind of Whoa. stiff and weird fabric. And they would be itchy. Yeah. I remember yeah. those. And I was like, he's wearing Velcro. some dead kids. Velcro pajamas. pajamas. Yeah, that's what they felt like. Hmm. So he's like sleeping in some dead kid's 1960s pajamas. Charming. And then when his shows up, they're all soft. They have sharks all over them. Yeah. Like the style is totally changed. So yeah. that's all I have to say about that. He just needed the Halloween mask <laughs> that we used to yep. have those creepy masks. And that's why that's why kids these days are not resilient. It, they're yeah. just they're buttercups that can't that can't withstand any kind of pressure. It's because they don't wear those itchy pajamas like they exactly. used to back in the seventies. I think exactly. we're solving problems on yeah. all fronts here, Bob. Yeah, I'm very, yeah. I'm very, I'm very pleased with the progress that we're making. So, yeah. Um, yeah so Tabitha says no. You, there's no hobo eggs. You got to eat uh, cream of wheat or uh, yeah. porridge or whatever the whatever the colloquialism of the day is yeah. in 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 fromville so julie's like screw this i'm going for a walk i'm gonna go out know, right the, i'm gonna go out in the dangerous world that is a guess okay because it's daytime i'm sorry uh-huh. i wouldn't be going outside for weeks you think yeah. I, you, uh, I, like i would be after yeah. what i saw after what she saw yeah dude well, i'd yeah. be shit yeah. drunk every out. night yeah you'd be huh? freaked out you'd be yeah. totally freaked out and you'd be like I don't care about how many hot Ellis's there are out there walking around. I'm yeah. not leaving this place. I'll watch right. from the window. Like I'll yeah. watch them swim in the in the lake from the window. Thanks. So, yeah, exactly. so Tabitha goes off for oatmeal. Ethan looks out the window. Boy, White is there, but he's not smiling anymore. He's just looking back. And so there's a little bit of tension. Uh, yeah. But Ethan waves because he's friendly and he was raised right. And the boy in white. He smiles and he waves back and it's like, oh, damn, uh, this is going to be this is going to be uh, a match made in hell. These two yeah. friends, this is going to yeah. be bad. And yeah. uh, and and in this room, uh, there's wallpaper and the plants are hanging to dry. And there's a painting over the fireplace mantle of a woman. And you're like, what is this place? Is yeah. this Rousseau's wax museum? Or what? Yeah, I never got to go back to. Uh, the there's plants hanging to dry out 
like an herb, like as an herb, like, yeah. you know, dill or basil or mint or whatever. They're just yeah. hanging to dry. Yeah. But there's a painting over the fireplace mm. and it looks like it's a woman, but, you know, like say like a early 19th, well, maybe 20th century, something like that. But it looks like someone painted white rimmed glasses on it. Oh, yeah. Like they've, uh, I don't know. That's it was just something I caught. Not a big deal. I bet if you look really close, you can see eyes behind the woman moving. <laughs> actually, actually, Bob, it's Scooby actually the cat. It's the cat clock from Clue yeah. that goes back and forth. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's where the mole is. The mole is behind the painting, watching everyone and reporting back. That's but, what oh, it is. my God. It's don't get Donna. Her started. And yeah, she don't put get her glasses started. on because she couldn't see clearly. And she has to run from room to room, following people, looking through the peepholes. <laughs> All right. Let's get to the series part. Get the back series at part. the Sorry. diner. Back to Sorry. the diner. By the Go way, the folks, diner. just so you guys know, we are trying to do a rewatch of season one, episode three, choosing day with Lizzie and Bob. Man, yeah. and hopefully Lizzie will let us do it, but she's just I keeps interrupting. And I don't have, much to, and, I don't have um, much to say. I really don't. I'm not. No. I'm not going to let you guys take responsibility for how slow it's going. I think it's me. I think it's most. I, I really don't. Yeah. But by the way, since since we're talking about you, mm -hmm. and it is all about you, um, do you have anything coming up that you've been doing? Uh, we so we finished. We we filmed. Um, uh, a much longer format season three of King and Pond back in late November, December. And oh, it wow. is, it is crazy. We did a musical episode and we did a film noir episode and we did a flashback Hallmark uh, spoof episode. <laughs> and we, Man, we just went crazy. We, 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 we partnered with a new, it's the, it's the guys who produce trailer park boys. And they said, well, why don't you do season three with us? And we'll give you a six 22 minute episodes instead of the sort of the bell five. So we just went, man, we're just going to do crazy stuff. Reed sings in it. And wow. we've got all kinds of, oh, bunch of fun, just super fun things. And season two of King and Pond comes out in a few weeks. Awesome. So we did that last year. So that's fun. And where, where do you say? in Canada, where is it on usually? In Canada, you can only see it on, on bell five which is like one of the Canadian carriers in, uh, in, in, in Canada. So you need to have that service, but then season three and actually seasons one and two are going to be on the, the swear net, uh, uh, which is an online streaming service that the trailer park boys have. And you, you'll be able to see all of it. And it's a oh, very, awesome. a, a, a subscription to swear net is only like a couple of bucks. It's like two, two dollars and 50 cents a month. Like anybody can, can get it so one, once it's up once it's up i'll let you guys know you'll be able to watch the whole thing you could see Absolutely. me and me and reed and a bunch Please of our friends and, and you'll see some people from from pop up here and there some people who've who've shown up and done little 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 one-off things and stuff like and the that the best part is you survive i know both of us live <laughs> yeah you didn't get both killed of off and it's All a right, comedy let's... and it's fun and yeah anyway so there it is let's so get back to let's get back to the uh supermarket <laughs> Uh, yeah, we get we get to the we get to the diner. Uh, you know, Liu and uh, you know, Mister Liu, of course, has just been found dead. So these folks are are reeling from that loss. It's been a terrible. I mean, episode two was just a mess, right? Like, it was a crazy mess. So ever the dust is settling. We're in we're in we're in post dust settling mode, and she's flustered, and Kenny's flustered, and you know he's trying to clean up a little bit, and. Uh, and and you know she's she's mourning and and grieving and stuff like that so there's a lot of tension between the two of them uh note here the glass and the broom dustpan are blue <laughs> i don't know what it means yet not a coincidence you know what it means they found it at walmart and it was blue yeah it yeah. was a dollar <laughs> and there's dollar. only one there's only one walmart in Fromville, and when you go into that Walmart, you can never leave. Ugh. You're stuck in Walmart, which is not that different from a regular Walmart. <laughs> Pretty much, which is probably the inspiration for the show, honestly. So, um, 
you know, uh, she 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 feels really guilty and bad because she sort of thinks that, you know, Mrs. Luke, she thinks if she'd been there, maybe things could have been a little bit different. And Kenny's like, no, you couldn't have done anything like you wouldn't have been able to help dad like this was this was going to be bad no matter what. Uh, Sarah comes in and we all know what Sarah got up to, but nobody else does. So this is a real tense moment for the viewer They're like oh she's a snake in the grass and and she's responsible for mr lou getting killed so right this is a right. three this is a three's company moment where somebody knows something that someone else doesn't and it's all it's all just a, a parade of of nonsense and uh and but she feels bad she does feel bad you know there's i think she she does uh feel guilty and she wants to help and she looks up at Mrs. Liu, and that's the end of that little, little tense setup. I don't know if I explained that all that well. Yeah, but that was really. Oh, no, you did a great job. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. I mean, that's I think horrible. I think Mrs. Liu, you know what I find what I find really fascinating about her is she's very focused on what she does. She's mm -hmm. she's that old school. She might break something. A typical mom. Hey, we got we got customers coming. I don't yeah. have time for this. Let's do this. Um, and Keep calm and carry on. Someone dies, you get back to work. And and the fact That's is, cool. I didn't want to say this to Lizzie, but the glass when it actually broke, it was in the shape of the Cromanocle. I'm cool. kidding. I, I I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm so kidding. If and you freeze frame it. If you frame advance, you and see you turn it upside down. It's yeah. the map. No. Um. Yeah. Oh you know, my I, god. Yeah, I think I think though I think that the relationship between her and Kenny is just so sweet, and yeah. and I mean, on a serious note, you know, wow. it, it it I I as like I said, I love this episode, and I didn't like it for the simple fact that it just was really emotional for me because yeah, I had a close bad. relationship with my mom, and my my dad died when I was very young, so it was just kind of like ah, yeah, you know, it was really it, they did a great job. There's um, a lot of relatability in different places, depending. There's almost a little bit of something for everybody. It's like something horrible has happened. Things were things were cool. I mean, one of the interesting things about this moment in the show is that you're told in no uncertain terms that things have been pretty quiet for a long time. We 96 have, days. Yeah, we got into a good groove here. We had a good thing going on, and now all of a sudden, everything goes all the all to hell and whose fault is it frank. not frank it's the matthews family for showing up and oh. and just spreading their gospel all over the place and driving off when not listening when they're told frank it's a bad rap if you ask me i think you're really trying to do a good job of you know yeah. exonerating frank yeah. but it's oh, just not going frank. to happen Frank was, just right. having, Frank was just having a good time. He just wanted to watch the football game and have a few drinks. That's just all. Exactly. Time yeah. Life. For yeah. a month with it's your just buddy. So dandy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's all uh it it's all it's all Reed's fault. So <clears throat> the back up back up at the colony house, you know, outside near where the boy in white was, Ethan goes uh, goes out and Victor's there with his open lunch box and he he's he's pulling out his paper and crayons and he's counting his steps and the ground's muddy and you're like what is up with this guy this guy's not an ordinary person he's special what and how much how much of victor remind me how much of victor have you seen in the show until this point second scene it's only a second scene his and the first scene. scene was really creepy because he asked uh, Julie if she wanted some peaches. And That's then, right. Uh, and then what's her name? Uh, Fatima told her to go go away. Just right. Shoe them. Grab your peaches and shoe. But let so me ask all... you this question. <clears throat> what color is Victor's crayon? Oh, my God. It's blue. It's blue. Da, da, da. No. I'm telling so, you. The conclusion I've drawn is that everyone in From are sad. Oh, because of the blue. The blue. Uh, you know, it's another clue that they're sad. What? <laughs> they're in From. They're sad. Yeah. <laughs> that they went to a funeral. They're just they're just sad because of the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. But the blue really reinforces it. It does. You know? If yeah. we missed it. I, I, we're going to actually change the theme song to Am I Blue? Am I yeah, blue? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But, you no, know, but, I, I wouldn't invalidate that. I mean, I, I, you know, there certainly are lots of great pieces of visual storytelling that use color to kind of like underscore things or reinforce things and stuff like that. And sometimes they act as clues and, you know, in an, in an M night Shyamalan kind of way, you know, or it's like, uh, everything's red, you know, when there's a dead person around or whatever, right. Like yeah. it could be a clue. It could turn out, you may turn out to be vindicated. Uh, and me and Alex are going to feel pretty stupid. A, a, a yeah, Bob, I hope to God that we are. Yeah, I hope to God she's we, right yeah. with all this. I <laughs> hope she's right with all of this. Yeah, that'll be that'll be that'll be a very avant-garde bit of storytelling if we find out that uh, Liz is the mole. Lizzie's the mole. <laughs> like the, the the mole the mole is a fan, and they don't even know they're the mole. That would be cool. That would be like I'm the one in the painting looking. Yeah. Four dimensional. <laughs> I'm Bob, it's going to be a St. Elsewhere ending. Yeah. It's, did you know, it's do you know. remember St. Elsewhere? Yeah. It's not, it's an autistic kid's dream. Yes, it's exactly. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. That's St. Elsewhere. It was all made up in the kid's mind. And, and because St. Elsewhere featured a whole bunch of crossovers of other shows, there's actually a whole universe of TV shows that are part of this kid's imagined universe. It was a mess. And the whole problem was, because she's from Boston, he wanted to go to Duncan. Right. Yeah. Duncan. There is no other place to go. No. You All right. Can we get to the supermarket, please? Yeah. Super, super. So, uh, well, where where were we here? So, yeah. So, we have the, the scene, with, scene with Victor that really does tell you that he's a character in the show. And not just like a creepy bit of furniture person that yeah. we get introduced to to be like, there's weird people in Colony House. No, no, this guy's an actual, an, an actual thing. And Scott McCord yeah. is so great, isn't he? Like he's just, he's just remarkable. He's love such a great person as an actor. I love. And, him. and I gotta tell you, you know, meeting him mm. versus, like, you don't know what to expect if you never met him before. No. Like when you watch Victor, and he's like the coolest guy ever. Yeah. And and, cool and you're dude. like and you're like what the hell there's some serious acting going on. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he's yeah. very I mean, and I say this, him, Liz and Harold are the anchors of that show. And yeah. I wish they would get I know Harold gets the pub because he's the star, but yeah. Liz and 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 uh Scott have to I I don't know how you do it, but they got to get the the recognition. Yeah, I mean, their character their characters have a real they they're very rooted and cemented in something very consistent and yeah, it's it's they're the fulcrums around I think around which a whole bunch of other things revolve. Yeah, I I'm I'm yeah. very I'm always very compelled when I'm watching them uh yeah. do their do their work. I mean, I mean I I'm sure I said this, but Harold has Harold has my one of my favorite line reading of of the show in two seasons my favorite it's from the very first episode and it's when he says to kenny um we got to put this talisman in the in the rv and you know that that's that's all we can do we can't get these people out of here so we just put this in the rv and hope for the best and kenny says do you think that's going to work and and harold just has this great line reading where he goes i don't know <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> Like I, I really he could have said he could have said I don't know he could have made it really dramatic and kind of grave but there's something so genuine and truthful but like I don't know I'm making this shit up like yeah what? I, I go on knows? it's beautiful I really wish yeah. he would break the fourth wall <laughs> I really do like just look at the camera and be like what yeah. the fuck yeah what an interesting show it would become if people just broke the fourth wall and they look right at us yeah that would be awesome oh my god so here's oh the God. bit here's so here's the bit. So Colony House front porch, one of my favorite places in Frumville, the front porch of <laughs> Colony House. And and Fatima comes up to Julie and she's like, Sister, here's some berries. You've been through hell. Have yeah. a few of these berries. And Julie's like, weirded out. She's like, I don't even know if I want to learn any of your names. And Fatima's like, you know, we got an apple tree, we grow our own food, we got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, supermarkets are, are terrible. Like basically, the you know the dairy consists of a of a sheep that you gotta like 
slice skin off for bacon or something. I'm making this up. She doesn't say yeah. any of this stuff, but, but Fatima is <laughs> clearly trying to make her feel better, trying to make her feel at home and say, look, you're in safe hands. There are people here that are friendly and, and you'll be okay. It's weird for everybody at first, but you'll be okay. And then Fatima gives her a hug. And it's, that's your first sort of introduction to the idea that maybe Julie is going to be more comfortable at Colony House than with her own family. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. So. Yep. There's that. Um, we, we get back to the Matthew sleeping area. Jim's back from the RV. He's got a whole uh, a laundry basket full of clothes. He's like, I found all of our stuff, all the comforts of home uh, with me. And he's got pajamas and he with the sharks on it. And um, and Jim says, yeah, everything's everything's cool, Tabitha. Uh, he's got books. Ethan's happy because he's got his uh, Adventures of the Grand Gulagog um, and the Flight of the Flight of the Cromenockle and uh, and and the Adventures of the Grand Gulagog Concords. And Ethan's happy about that. So he's like, OK, I got some of my fun things. Tabitha says, "Yep, those are my favorites. They they're they're trying to normalize family a little bit. I think in this scene, like trying to focus yeah. on nice well, little things." I mean, he baseball. asked her. He asked Tabitha, "You know, when are we going home?" Yeah, and and she gives a a mom answer like, "We're yeah. trying to figure it out." Like, trying to figure you know, it out. I, I don't have a fucking clue either. Yeah. So, and there's this and lovely little lovely little moment when the parents, you know, become. Cromenockles. I mean, they have no idea what they're doing, but they they yeah. become Cromenockles, and you know they make the the funny noise. And there's this sort of like, well, you know, kind of a life is beautiful, Roberto Benigni kind of moment where it's like, well, we're clearly in the sixth circle of hell, but we're yeah. gonna we're gonna play make believe for you to distract you from the truth of it for a few. Is this minutes. what Frank did when they first got to From, and it just went down the hill? Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. He probably was like, oh, yay, finally, we've made it to Disneyland. This is... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to build the case for you. Yeah. Frank is a good guy. Yeah. He, he, he was a good guy. Convinced his daughter for the first eight months that they were in Epcot Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a really long line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. You got to wait till your phone pings to tell you that it's time to show up. That's, that's what... Yeah. <laughs> That's that's what that's what they're doing. So, um, uh, it, but Julie's not Julie's not down with this. She's like she's too it. old. She's too old for this shit. She's like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not here to do playtime. There's serious stuff going on, and this is bad. So you guys just cut it with your shenanigans and or and or goings on. I'm not. I'm not messing around with this stuff. So she's she's getting real surly. She's a teenager, and she's not putting up with this stuff with any of this that's really cool. yeah not that's looking right. forward to that and then 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 we get the bit where it's it's like okay father cotry is here to give you the tour give you the tour of the town and uh he'll he'll fill you in on all the he'll, the sixth and seventh decimal places of what this place is all about <laughs> and what you're right, gonna have I, to what you're gonna have to boy. do um yeah, yeah. sorry but yeah I mean, I'm just looking at Julie through most of this episode and she's just a sourpuss. Mm. And it, I, given that it's the day after they were on the porch, I just, I guess I don't understand why she's not holding on to her parents a little more than she is. Oh, yeah, I know again. why. Oh, why? yeah. Because she's a bitter teenager and the world revolves around her and she's just pissed off. Yeah. But I just, I kind of just don't get why her fear isn't driving her toward them. Instead, she's basically pushing away and saying no more. Because, no, I think that's a good point. I think the reason being is she knows what's going on. Remember, she knows what's going on. What do you mean? She knows that they're she knows they're splitting up. Oh, but still, well, and, I mean, and, that whole family and she's trying to have like a little must have seen made them look like frauds to her. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, she's she looks at Fatima and Ellis and Colony House 
where they treat her like an equal. Yeah. And then, then to top it off, Father Katri with the tour, what do they tell her to do? Watch, watch Ethan. Yeah. Like she has no opinion, yeah. even though she's 16. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever age she, she's a teenager. Yeah. It's and, clearly part of it. Yeah. You know, although I don't have a teenager yet, I can feel the, uh, the shift it's coming for you. starting You're getting and there. it's not fun as a, having a nine year old. Yeah. You get, but, there. um, yeah, it's getting there as you the, well know. Uh, so here's a fun, here's a fun bit of trivia, uh, in, in a version of the script, um, you know how Frank says to Boyd, there is something that I'd like to do. Yeah. Right. And, then in, and then in the episode that we see, he's taking Boyd to this like tree swing that he built right. for his daughter. In the in in the first version of the script, that is not where they go. They go to the house, and Frank walks in. And Frank is in the room where his daughter and wife died, just to wow. be there one last time when the Matthews family show up. Oh wow! True story. That's what that's what. Now was there yeah. was there a monologue with it? Like a big monologue? Did you have? No, not in that scene. No, it was it not in that scene. The monologue, the monologue still happened at the choosing day thing. But I think in the in 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 an, in a, an earlier version of the script, there was a joint scene between all of them at the at the house. So Frank's there, and the Matthews family come in. They're like, "Oh shit, we got here wrong, at the wrong time. Sorry, buddy." And he's just like, "Yeah, I just need a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna go." And then the tire swing or the the trees swing scene wasn't a tree swing scene it was at the grave oh when when he when he tells the story of building a swing and how all that stuff there is no actual swing they're at they're at the the, the grave so i think i think there was some moving of some things around maybe for practical reasons or to give the thing yeah. a bit more flow or not be using the same locations because there's a there's still the scene with toby at when he takes jade to the so i think that would have been like yeah. a repeated kind of like yeah, a, a location beat or something like that. So they just kind of diverse. But I don't know what the thinking was behind it, but I just know that there was a there was a version of the script that had some things happening in different places, um, in in different ways. For me, and right, anyway. now, and right now, Lizzie's trying to figure out how that relates how that, to the whole how that plays in. Theory. That's no, 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 no. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking about that. You know, had they had you at the cemetery as well. It, you're right. It would have been too repetitive. But what I can't understand is why the heck Frank would create a swing for her out in the middle of the woods where the monsters live. <laughs> like yeah. that during is, the day, the day's okay. Yeah, the, the, know, it just it during just the day me. during the day you just got to worry about the jackals and bears that are in the woods. You don't got to worry about the monsters, and then you just teach your child how to deal with those kinds of uh, of wildlife, <laughs> which what, is a good hey, fatherly thing to do. Do you have ticks up in? I, this is stupid, but oh do you yeah, have ticks in Canada, you well, do. Big time. Yeah, yeah. They're wow. but they're. It's a, it's it, it is I mean it was I you know I remember you know getting ready to to be part of the shooting of season one and one of the big things you know there's a number of things they sort of walk you through okay we're going to be outside a lot so here's what we got to keep in mind about being out in the sun sunscreen yeah. and hydrating and stuff like that but there was a whole thing I remember reading in the sort of like orientation sort of package about ticks yeah about Did you about, have snake you know, we're out in the woods. We're literally out in the woods. It's like real. These are real. This is a real place. Yeah. 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 And, and how long was that episode? How long does an episode take usually for you guys or for them? I mean, I guess it depends. But like, you know, I think I don't think I would be too. I don't think I would be too off. It depends on what's happening in the episode, of course, because some things take longer than others. But I'd say like five five shooting days maybe like five or six shooting days depending what's going on if you and and again you're not you're not you're not you're not just shooting with the one episode like right. you, might, you might be shooting like the very very first scene that i shot the very first scene that i shot which was on like day one of filming 
And and this was the first thing that Harold did too. Like my first my first moment on in the thing was also his first moment as as me as Frank and him as Boyd. And it was him dragging me up the stairs and throwing me against the wall. How did that, I mean, given that you didn't know each other, you know, Bob didn't know Harold all that well. Yeah. Like, was it difficult to get into that intensity? I mean, did you guys do anything to warm up prior to that? Oh, yeah. To establish something? Yeah, we had, we uh, you know, they, a really, really good um, stunt coordinator. And we walked through some of the combat pieces and, you know, how to take the bump so that it was believable. And, you know, so we did we did the dragging up the stairs, throwing against the wall, screaming in my face, punching me, uh, pushing me through the doorway, showing me the and it's actually my friend Anne in the bed. They built her into the bed and she's all messed up. And then that the, was a dummy. And that wasn't, they didn't have the little girl there. That would have been a bit yeah. much, but, yeah. you know, throwing me down on the floor, holding the gun to my head, you know, I grabbed Kenny's feet and, you know, uh, Ricky's feet and stuff like that. And it, it just, that was, that was the first day. All of that stuff was, was day one. And we did all of that in, um, we did all that in the sound, sound stage. We didn't do it. Yeah. That wasn't out at the house on location. It was like, it was right. in, the, in the studio where they built all the sets and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, it was, but it was the kind of intense for everybody because nobody really knew, you know, there was a real yeah. sense of, there was a real sense of kind of excitement at the end of the day. Cause it was like, Oh wow, that really worked. It really <laughs> did. We, pulled, it we was, pulled that off. That was real. That was really cool. And it was, it yeah, was. It was chaotic and, and, you know, hard on the, hard on the walls and the set and a lot of tossing around, but it, yeah, like this, so that you yeah. just get a sense of how out of order, things get filmed and kind of how all over the place, like the first one I did was that. And the last one I did was out at the, the tree swing. Wow. Yeah. So it's everything, everything's kind of all over the place. You're filming chunks of different episodes sometimes on the same day. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of hard to say how long it takes to do an episode. Cause it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but for, for yeah. the most part, it's like a couple, two, two episodes, three episodes per block, you know, which is like three weeks or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot of shows will film in blocks and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, they'll switch off um, directorial teams. That's right. In order yeah. To do that. Yeah. You know? It's a good, it's a good way to organize it. It keeps things cohesive yeah. and, and, you know, uh, sort of a through line for at least a couple of episodes. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Good. Um, so back to, back to the episode. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this. Let's try to motor through. Uh, in the kitchen of Colony House, Father Cotri's there, and he's visiting with all of them. And he's like, "This is how this works. You get to choose where you live. You either live here, up in Fun Colony House, or you live down in Akron, Ohio, or what? Well, you know, whatever, whatever the <laughs> whatever the, the town is supposed to be. Right? It's like the town from Leave It to Beaver, or something like that. And he's like, so you get to choose." And yeah, Julie wants to go down for the tour. She wants to see what the place is all about. And they're like, no, you got to look after your brother so that he doesn't take off with, uh, you know, children of the corn out there. So, yeah. so that, so that's cool. She's not too happy about, not too happy about this. Um, and and uh, Tabitha's like, you guys stay, stay here, stay here with the kids. And, but then Katri, Father Katri's like, oh, I think they should all see it. Like they, they really, everyone's got to, there's this sense that everybody's got to get normalized to this place or else they're not going to survive. So, so, uh, all they, they all go, they do all go. Is that what? Is that yeah. What well, no, no, just, um, no Julie doesn't go. go. Julie doesn't go, but, Neither does Ethan. uh, Julie and Ethan, yeah, because Ethan's not supposed to be out of bed. Right. It's, it's Tabitha who thinks that she should stay with the kids right. father God is like no you 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 come with me um your kids are in great hands here with donna and victor yeah um <laughs> the you can try you can try your kid we get the sex couple will babysit them and you just yeah. you come with me we're all set um we get to see the diner we go go down the diner again and yeah. people are standing outside the diner and uh and we get the great scene in the diner with Jade where Jade's like, "Ah, oh, I'm going to start my investigation at the diner." Presumably he's just been cycling around the town in circles for a little while around, and yeah. now he's back at the back meanwhile back at the diner. And uh 
and yeah, he makes a bit of an ass of himself. He's talking about this place being a puzzle and he's looking for clues and treating everybody like they're like they're they're actors at uh, Universal Studios or whatever. And and he's he's just doing his thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, lady tells him that there's a line. And I think that, I think that's my friend Rebecca who says to him that there's a line and he's like, yeah, listen, you know, I know that there's rules, but I'm hungry and I want some yeah. uh, breakfast sausages and tater tots. So, yeah. Yeah. and I paid for all you guys anyways. So yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah, this is for me. This is for me. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the guest of honor. So, yeah. so what are you going to do? And that's I when I love how he do. just took the plate out of the guy's hand. Yeah, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, he's just like, you know, whatever, right? Like, yeah. I can do whatever I want. And then Mrs. Lou puts him in his place. She <laughs> comes up and hits him with the She plate. smacks the shit out of him. Just <gasps> boom. Just with a spatula. Yeah, yeah. He'll be out with a spatula. And uh, and he's like, whoa, this is really realistic. And yeah. Sarah's 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 waiting on tables. Uh, yeah. and and she goes outside to meet her brother and and she stops him and and he's like, you know, what are you what are you doing here? You know, apparently she was gonna stay home. And uh and she's like, Well, that would have been pretty conspicuous if I had stayed home and not shown up for work. Yeah. There would have been. I cannot afford to lose shifts. I'm, I need the money. I I'm need the money. Saving up. Yeah, I'm saving I up. Live off the of tips. Saving up for that trip to Atlantic City, yeah. and you got you got to let me work. Um, so you know, she tells she she wants to help. She needs to help. She needs to be there. This is what she needs. We're still not a hundred percent sure. I don't think at this point whether she had some kind of out of body experience. Or whether she's got maybe some kind of split personality thing going on, or sure. she's possessed by some otherworldly, otherworldly thing. It really, it really is a lead that gets buried early on in the show. Yeah. This idea that she's, you know, that you know about the monsters, yeah, and you know about the the nighttime stuff, but then there's this whole other angle where she's being manipulated by some unseen force. You almost forget about that for a little while, like yeah. they. they drop it on you and then just shove it aside and and let you get on with getting to know the place isn't that like a lost thing Don't yeah they sure do that in lost yeah 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 there's lots of i mean it, it really is one of the interesting things i was actually thinking about this watching true detective um you know thinking about how like i love these shows where um they leave you wondering for quite a long time as to whether what you're seeing happening is paranormal or metaphysical or whatever, or if you're kind of being tricked into thinking it is, but actually there's a real world practical or scientific explanation for what's going on. Um, yeah. it, this show, obviously with the monsters and stuff, you're like, okay, well, these are actual monsters. Like this is, this is, this is a thing. But then there's a whole other thing where you're kind of like, wait a minute, are there ghosts here? Like, is it, you know, yeah. is it invasion of the body snatchers type thing? Do people get possessed by spirits or like it kind of does play at the fringes a little bit of what kind of thing it is. And it leaves you wondering for a while. And it's it, it really throws you off, I find. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like everything all at once. Yeah. I, I It just, you know, when she came when she came into the diner and was helping them clean up the glass. Mm. I just thought she gave Mrs. Lou the most evil look. And, you know, I I don't know. And then she's telling her brother that she needs to help. And I'm wondering what she meant by that. Yeah. What does she need to help with? I, I mean, I, 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 I took it to be pretty genuine. Like, I think. But I is think... she helping those forces? Or is she trying to help Mrs. Lou after she arranged for the murder of her husband? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, my my read on it, you know, we sort of went down this road a little bit, I think, last time. Like my 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 read on it is that these are genuine, these are genuine expressions of like a a, a character, like the like. I don't see a lot of duplicity in what people okay. say and what they do, and in fact, I I I I think if there was duplicity, that would be a pretty you know, I think I did say this last time, like, I really don't think there are moments where people are pulled aside and they're told, listen, here's what the script says. 
but we actually want you to kind of give away some little hints that you mean something different than what you're actually saying. I don't think that actually goes on. I think, I think, I think the text is what it is and people are playing it straight. They're playing it. And, and if there is weird stuff going on that comes out in the, yeah. in the narrative, like my read of Sarah is that she's unwittingly and under some duress being controlled by another force. And when yeah. she's pleading with her brother and she's saying, I need to be here and I need to be helping and I need to be doing something, she means it. She's not trying to slip a Mickey Finn to anybody or pull a wool over right, anyone's right, eyes. Right. And trying to, no, no, no. She, it actually, it, 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 I think it's narratively important that you understand that she is in conflict internally and that she's not trying to dupe anybody, right? Yeah. In fact, I don't, I personally, and I know we talked about this and debated it, I don't think there's anybody. I don't think there's personally, I don't think there's a single character that is trying to dupe anybody. I think everything you're seeing from everyone is what is what you're getting. And the mystery is in the the mysteries in the world of it, the mysteries in the yeah. circumstances of it. Yeah. I don't think there's I don't think there's any secret agents or anything like that. If and there is, I, it'll be quite a thing. I believe that of her more toward the end of the season hmm. than I do at this point um i don't know i i i agree to a point uh, up until the i don't know yeah i'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. open to it i'm open to it yeah, but i do think I, that even even i think i think she i think she does 100 percent mean it when she's struggling with this moment where the voices whatever they are tell her if you want everyone to go home you gotta kill this kid yeah and I think yeah. she struggles with that. And she's like, well, I didn't like that piece of instruction. That yeah. gives me bad feelings. But this place sucks. And, yeah. and wouldn't it be great if everyone could go home and maybe the sacrifice of one person is worth it? And like, I feel like you see that ethical dilemma play out in what happens with her character. I think she she yeah. genuinely, and in that, in that sense, it's not unlike what someone goes through in a cult or a, uh, you know, when they fall into a bad community that is bad for them, but it's a community. And if that's what you want, you're what you're looking for. Okay, well, then you're going to do some weird stuff in the name of of having people around you who care about you. Like it, it plays yeah. into some of that, some of those energies a little bit for me. Like I, yeah, I found, yeah. I find, I find it entirely compelling. I don't need more than, than what, what they're showing me. I don't need a deeper mystery. I find the character, the character tensions and conflicts are enough. I think they do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's that piece. Uh, then we get the, we get, I think what is a pretty key moment of the show. We get father Cotri basically laying out the groundwork for the Matthews family and mm -hmm. by extension, the viewers, right? Father yeah. Cotri's like, absolutely. Everything, we, everything you've seen happen up to this point Here's me giving you, telling you what, what, what it is. And I, Sean Majumder is so good as, as this, uh, as this character. I, I was really sad really? to see him go, but uh, I, this yeah. episode in particular. Yeah. And we, um, we spent a good bit of time over a couple of days shooting the, the different scenes and stuff. And, uh, and, and he was clearly having a good time. And there are some little bits and pieces of things that didn't make the final cut that he added um, particularly in the marching me to my death scene that, that are, you know, really, I thought were really elegant kind of additions. Um, I think they made him a huge mistake killing him off that early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, someone's, someone important's got to go pretty early. And, though, and, right? like, and that's yeah. the problem. No, but Bob, that's the problem. Yeah. The, the fans will yell, yell and scream because nobody dies. But yeah. then when you kill somebody off, you yell and scream that somebody, so I, I, I see it from both sides. But I yeah, love what win. they did in season two, where they did bring them back through Boyd. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's I'm that's a fun way of doing more it. More of that, like I would love to to see that happen over and over again, to kind of make Boyd look crazy. Yeah, although it's it, I'm I'm still like uh, you know this this is jumping ahead a bit. I'm still not a hundred percent sure what the what the utility of that device was for the show i don't mean this is a criticism i mean it more yeah. as like a genuine question like a genuine curiosity like and i and i i i like to think that it's not a um i'm going to use an expression that probably some people will think doesn't apply here but kind of a jump the shark kind of moment 
where yeah. where you you the 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 narrative isn't demanding the return of a character but hey wouldn't it be cool if we had this actor back for some stuff so right. we'll 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 put him in a flashback and that'll be kind of neat like i'm not saying that doesn't always work but i'm always I'm, I'm always sensitive when i'm watching something and i'm going is this is what i'm seeing happening because you know it's like when boys to men shows up on fresh prince of bel-air you're like well you know, in the yeah. real world, these guys aren't going to show up at a, a random funeral because they know somebody's uncle. Like that would be quite an extraordinary moment. But in yeah. the world of this show where everybody's famous and this is being shot in Hollywood, yeah, I guess you have the fresh, the you have boys to men show up like that. That's what I mean. It, it 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 is it is kind of like a fourth wall break in the sense that it goes, oh, this is a show where people come on the show because they're famous and it's like guest spots and stuff like that. Does that yeah. make sense? Like it's, yep. it's just, yeah. Out of all the examples you could have said, Boys to Men on Fresh <laughs> Prince, I don't think we're ever going to get that anywhere else. Totally random. Nope. I pulled that out well, totally randomly. I didn't plan that. It just came into I'm my just head. I'm saying, um, like all the other po from podcasts, I guarantee you <laughs> will never have that. that. Yeah. And that's like what we get with you. Trivial <laughs> bit of brick and brack that just pops up out of nowhere. And, like, the oh, sad yeah, that's, part that's, is, that's, I'm with you because I remember watching that. When, oh yeah, I totally with you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so what was your thoughts when they were when when they were? I'm trying to get us back on track here. Yeah. yeah what yeah. was your thoughts uh, when the Matthews saw the room, your daughter's room? I mean, that was pretty. That was pretty. Uh, holy shit! This is real. Yeah. And, and, and it, it certainly is very jarring. And I think, I think puts a really fine point on the predicament that they're in where it's sort of like, well, here's the house where you would live. If you choose to live in the town, you've, yeah. had, a, you've had a taste of colony house and, yeah. and the, the, the couch sex mascots, like you've, yeah. you've seen what that's all about, but now Here's a house where someone died less than 24 hours ago, and they were torn apart here in one of the kids' bedrooms. Oh, with, by the way, here's a gallon of paint, so you can paint over it. Yeah, Maybe you, can, you, you, can, you can paint over it. May I direct your attention to the beautiful crown moldings uh, <laughs> over the doorways <laughs> that are just lightly splattered with blood? Don't worry about that. We're going to yeah. paint over that with a nice eggshell white, and and you you will enjoy this house right down to its chocolatey center. Like... <laughs> <laughs> there is there is something very jarring about it being like oh there's time is of the essence here they got to choose soon and there's no time to reupholster this place like it, exactly. is, it is freshly there's fresh massacre here in this in this room it's like oh shit yeah i guess that's how this goes right this is this yeah. is what happens in this place so you get it as is yeah you get a free house what i wonder is like if if they hadn't shown up and what happens with Frank and his family is entirely incidental to yeah. the beginning. Like there really is no relationship between the two, dare I say, inciting incidents. There's the, there's the, the Frank's family being killed. And then there's the Matthews family showing up. And both of those things happen independently. If, if the fa Matthews family hadn't shown up and, and, and Frank's house becomes newly available because of what happens do they go to someone in Colony House and say, hey, you know, we're going to draw lots to see who, who is there anyone who maybe has run their run the course on their time yeah. here in Colony House who would like to live down downtown, like yeah. down in the suburbs, like maybe yeah. maybe someone wants to move. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to how that works. Like what's what are the logistics or do they just leave that house empty until someone shows up or do they have a conversation about about this new vacancy that has popped up? I don't know. I, like, I, can I, anyone I claim it? Yeah, and, and who say, gets? Yeah. What are the rules of that? You know, just yeah. curiosity that I had. You know, how does yeah. how does the real estate market work in Frumville? <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, it's a it could be yeah. a hot and cold market there in Frumville because yeah. because Cotri's kind of doing double duty as a realtor in this scene. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's a definite he's the definite hype man for the town. Yeah, he's yeah. like it's a fixer upper, but uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, so. So yeah, so they have some conversations. There's some, there's a bit of theorizing going on here, right? Like Jim and his engineering head, he's like, oh, maybe we're on a fault line, or maybe yeah. this is a, 
you know, like maybe, maybe this is Dante's Inferno or maybe, you know, whatever. And they, they want to know the science behind the talisman. It's like, we don't know how this works. It just works. Yeah. Right? Just, That's this all is, that matters. Is, and we protect each other. And then out on the streets, uh, Katri uh, finally gives us the lowdown on the box. The box is where you go. If, uh, if you goof and, uh, and, and we can't have you around here anymore. So dun dun dun, we get the yeah. we get the, we get the whole box, and it's like, oh, that seems pretty harsh. Yeah, you haven't seen the the you haven't seen the half of it yet, Jim. Yep. You wait and see how bad this shit gets. Hold on. Yeah. Mm. And then so they go to their house. So we get to see the house. We get to see the room, and you know, this is what happens when you break the rules. And and uh, you know, Tabitha and Jim are quite rightly freaked out when they when they learn about what goes on, what went on in this place. And Tabitha is so freaked out. She's like, I got to get out of here. This is a, a place of a place of death. Yeah. So off they go. <laughs> yeah. And then we get um, one of your big scenes. Yeah, we come to we come to one of my we come to one of my big scenes. They're out walking through the woods. Honestly, if I if I had to confess something, I would say this is probably the only scene. I was very, very happy with how everything turned out. But I remember watching this scene and feeling like, I wonder if I could have played that a little different. Like, do you do that a, often? No, not often. No, I don't because I, I I really do kind of separate myself from the stuff, you know, whether it's comedy or whether it's you know this or that. And and I've I've become quite. I don't mind watching myself in things, and I've become quite desensitized to it. And I can almost watch stuff and like not even see me. In yeah. It and just go okay. Well, I'm into the story. This is the 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 story's doing its work. If I'm not focused on my own part but this is one part yeah. where i think i think i was a little thrown off by the by the space yeah and by, by by how like i felt the, at the top of the scene i projected a little bit too much and i don't know like I've, it's one of the rare moments where i found myself kind of being a little bit picky about about how it turned out i still think it's a it's a i still think it's a fine scene it, and yeah. the scene is really more about boyd than it is about frank anyway because yeah. this is yeah. the scene where boyd goes wow he's uh He's really milking this. He's really making a meal of this whole broken man thing. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't put him in the box. Maybe that's the, what kind of a town are we? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like that, this is this is the doorstep of that of that of that moment and that that scene that he's going to have with Kotri a little bit later on. So yeah, yeah, it's an interesting interesting little bit. Um, Colony House, we're back up. Ellis, who is like a real, uh, uh, I guess, sort of Inspector Gadget, Red Green type character, he he fashions a, a whittles a crutch, I guess, for uh, for poor Ethan with his with his fucking Bowie knife or like what, like what, like how did he how did he make this crutch? What did he do? I know. Salvation Army or what? Where did he get it? What did he do? We don't know, but he just has this crutch and he gives it to uh, gives it to Ethan. So they're all friends now. And yeah. uh, Ethan hobbles around a little bit, and he's adorable. And uh, Fatima tells Julie that Ethan's adorable, sweet little boy. And Julie's like, "Yeah, screw that, he sucks." <laughs> and 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 Julie's like, "You don't know us. Like, you don't yeah. know how dysfunctional our family is." And Fatima's right. like, "Who cares? We're all in this together. It's what we do. We're family. Yeah, right. We're we're, we're the we're the Sopranos. So so this is good." Uh, so Julie's starting to be like, yeah, okay, Colony House starting to look pretty good. And then we get back to Kenny and Jade together. And Kenny and Jade have an interesting little, um, you know, sort of uh, interaction. Um, and 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 Kenny's sort of uh, humoring him a little bit with this escape room type business, right? You know, Jade's sort of yeah. pitching him this idea that this is all, all pretend. And Kenny's like, yeah, you haven't talked to a whole lot of people yet have you like is there like what what information have you been given and uh jade's like well donna talked to me she's the games master clearly but she didn't tell me what to do. <laughs> didn't tell me what to do next you know i don't know what to do and he and he starts to scrutinize the the escape room a little bit nitpicking it and being like yeah this could be better that could be better and yeah. uh, <laughs> you know and he and he's like 
Uh, one of the things I, I think we talked about this one of the things i like about jade in this moment i actually think the third episode is a really great time for this to happen in the early life of the show for a viewer who's watching it and trying to get into it jade basically steps into the shoes of the discerning skeptical viewer yeah and he's pointing things out in his mind about the escape room the deficiencies in the yeah. in the logic the flaws in the ointment which yeah. really could very easily stand in for an audience member going wait a minute where did all these cows come from exactly where electricity where are these chickens yeah. come like this doesn't make any sense he's almost disarming a viewer with those kinds of thoughts by giving voice to it within the show which i thought yeah. was quite clever i thought yeah. i thought that was a clever approach to take yeah yeah i like that too yeah. And then, you know, Kenny's just like, well, they're just out in the woods. We don't even know where they come from. And that yeah, just geez. seems like a lame answer if this really is an escape room. Yeah. Kenny Kenny channels Boyd's bit from episode one. He's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where the chickens come from, man. I just, just know leave. we can't leave. Yeah. What are you going to do? They're going to analyze this to death? No, we got to survive. So, yeah. Um, and then Christy shows up. Uh you know, uh, is Christy come in? Yeah, Christy comes in yeah. to check on them. Uh, you know, and and Ken, Kenny tells tells her who this guy is. He's like, yeah, he's from the he's the other guy, not the dead guy, but the other guy, obviously, from the yeah. car. And uh, and he's up to no good. He's he's causing problems here. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, and then they 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 have a little nice little moment. They hold hands, Kenny and yeah. Christy. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just like, really ooh. You're like, oh, this there's a little something something. something. Yeah, they were at the colony house. Little, yeah. little hope, little hope. Yep. And then, yep. and then, honestly, we have one of my favorite scenes of the episode, which is the episode between Victor and Ethan. Yeah. Where he's like, where he's like, what are you, what are you doing? What's going on out here? It's like Forrest Gump and his son. Like, yeah. what are you, what are you watching? What's happening out here? He's like, I'm counting steps because the trees are moving. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. What is going on with this guy? And, and yeah. they form a little, they form their little like mini alliance. It's like, Oh, yeah. well, I'll, 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 I'll help you. I'll, I'll watch for stuff. And they have a little conversation and, you know, it, it, Ethan's asking too many questions, but you can tell the Victor kind of digs him in a yeah. way. It's like he's yeah. got a little buddy now. So that sets the, that sets the stage for, for uh, 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 moving forward. But there are certainly some cryptic things that get said. Yes. It's seen about the trees moving and about all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, Their boy in white. Boy in white comes in up. Common, says, yeah. yeah. That friend of yours, yeah. Tell tell him that Victor says hello, which which is like, oh, I mean, that's interesting, right? Because it tells you that this isn't something that only Ethan is seeing. Yeah, exactly. That's important. And and it made me wonder because at. We don't know a heck of a lot, but knowing what we know, has Victor not seen him yeah. since he was a kid? Can only little boys see mm. this kid? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it goes from, you know, because Ethan thinks that the kid lives right out in those, you know, in that little patch of woods yeah. right there, because yeah. that's where he keeps seeing him. But it just, it, it it tells Victor that he wasn't imagining this kid. Yeah. After all, like that's this true. Kid, won't. Victor's Victor's seems to be a little ho hum about it though. Isn't he? Like he doesn't, yeah. it doesn't seem to be a, he doesn't treat it as much of a revelation. It's not like, he's not like oh, you see him too. He's just like, Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Tell him, tell him Victor yeah. said hi. Like it's, yeah. this, it's this almost like a throwaway kind of thing, which, yeah. which, I, which I think is actually kind of cool because Victor, Victor is the character that delivers to us this desensitized, numbed. Yeah, this place is nuts, and yeah. I've seen all of it, and I've been I've here for a long time. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. all right, chug, chugging along. We're gonna motor through. We're gonna motor through the rest of it. We won't even go into great details. So we're not we're not keeping that's okay. Here. We're not keeping everybody here forever. So um, what? you're not spending the night with us. Uh, well, you know, we don't, if you want a three hour episode, we can, I mean, I'm, you know. I don't want to edit a three hour episode guys. 
No, that's right. See, did you hear that? All right. Executive so producer. We'll stop at room. two yeah. even, no matter where we are. Is that okay? Another twenty minutes. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So okay. let's, let's get the Jade Seller. Let's get the good stuff. The Jade Seller is great bit because that's. Yeah. I I don't know if that's the first moment. I think it is the first moment where there's kind of like a. A weirdness. A weirdness. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like where it's like maybe we see things that aren't there. Yeah. Right. It's the it's the sixth sense kind of moment, right? So you're yeah. like, oh shit! It's it's when we go off the rails and we're like, wait, what is this show again? That's right, and that is what I felt in that moment. Yeah. It's like, oh, this place also plays tricks on you. Yeah, right? you know, like I I felt I got the sense that, you know, when the guy turns to him and screams, I I, I noticed his blue eyes with the white whites. But yeah. it, but all this blood, and you would think that the eyes would be bloodshot or something like that. And yeah. Jade is so shocked; he's thrown back on the on the floor, and he looks up and he sees this weird symbol on the ceiling. And yeah. for a moment, he forgot where he thought he was and was completely freaked out. Yeah, like this wasn't Disneyland, where you know you know the animatronics are only so scary and you know that they're not real mm -hmm. right instead you're someplace else like in one of the haunted houses where you're lost in your own psyche yeah everything seems real and yeah. you're scared and he was genuinely scared for a moment and then he came back to himself and he's skipping out of that cellar like oh my god toby you are a genius yeah, yeah, so yeah. You can, you can, you, you can tell he's had a moment where he's like, "Oh, wait a minute, that seemed a little bit too real," and yeah. I'm just gonna pretend maybe that wasn't as heavy as it was, because yeah. I might have to face an uncomfortable truth if I lean that, into yeah, it. Yeah, that I'm really here and this is really real. That's right. And yeah, that's right. I don't want to deal with wants it. Wants to. Yeah. Who wants to to realize that, but yeah, that's right. And then um, we have then we have the 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 moral dilemma scene in the church where yeah. Boyd, you know, and, and I think I think it's probably plays out a bit counterintuitively for anyone who was expecting something different. Boyd goes to Father Cotri for some counsel, and he's like, "I'm having second thoughts. I'm not sure if we should put Frank in the box." And the godly priest, who you'd think would say, "Yeah, you know, Jesus, turn the other cheek," all that stuff, he doesn't say that. He's like, well, "Wait a minute, you you made the rules." Yeah. And and now your first 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 opportunity to apply them, you're gonna bend. Oh man, that's gonna be bad, right? Which it really, if you, like the devil was talking. What's that? It almost seemed like the devil was talking because, yeah, like I you're see. right, the priest should have said, "Turn the other cheek," but instead yeah, no. he's like, yeah, "Put him I, in the I, I I I think what we see play out over the course of particularly that first season, I think kind of helps you to, I, I, I really think that Katri's, um, Katri's character is, is very well substantiated. Like there's a bit of a reverse engineering, but I think when you come to see where he came from and what he went through and where he lands, you, you understand that there's, there's this guy who's like, this place is going to go to hell real fast. If we don't yeah. stick to, you know, if we don't create some tenets, and and stick to them like i think i think i think he's quite consistent that way um no no he definitely believe, is yeah like he definitely is i totally agree with that but when he didn't give in to boyd to me it just seemed and i'm not trying to say there's you know like the devil has its hand in this show that's not sure. what i'm saying yeah, i'm just yeah. saying that you know instead of what he should have said as a priest, he turns around and he's like, no, put him in the box. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I get what you're saying. Like they are so on the edge of losing everything in every second that if they yeah. set a rule, they have to follow that rule. Yeah. Listen, this is Fromville. This ain't your daddy's pastor. Right. You know, exactly. this isn't, this isn't youth group. Like we're here to we're here to survive, right? Yeah. Yeah. I dug I dug that scene. I thought that I thought that scene was 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 really good. And um and I I love I love Harold's performance in this scene in particular. Like I yeah. I 
I, I was quite impressed at how genuinely torn he seems, he seems to be. Well, um, yeah, it's, there's it's great. two, there's two lines that I love about this. You know, um, Katri says, when you build a guillotine, you get what you get. You either use yeah. it or you don't. And then of course, Harold's like, you're a lousy fucking priest. Yeah. Because yeah. he's not answering it, but it's so it's, I mean, he uses that line in season two too, as well. And, and I just think that it, it, you know, your advisor doesn't want to tell you what you want to hear. Right. He tells you what it, that, that's the, that's the, uh, the mark of a good advisor. Yeah. It's and the I truth. That, he's that, the, yeah. He's the consigliere and he's like, yeah. you, you may, you may never use the thing that you've said you're going to use, but if your opportunity comes along where you, you, the conditions are right and you don't you know, do it. it you've taken the piss out of it completely. Then yeah. people won't, people, no one will believe that you'll use it, which really, if you think about it, makes Frank a hero in this episode. Frank is he, always a he hero. Saves, he saves Boyd from having to make the choice. Yeah. He rescues him from that predicament, which means we have not yet in two seasons, we have not yet actually seen Boyd have to make that choice. Right. Like, he does take Sarah off into the woods, but he comes back and there's still, there's still this question kind of floating over everything. It's like, are, will they, will they do this? Will they, uh, will they, will they use it? I'm not sure that we'll ever see the box get used again, but, but Hey, I'm, I'm open to being wrong about that. Um, but anyway, so there it is. Uh, it, it, Boyd comes back. He has this scene with Frank where he basically tells him I've made up my mind and you just need to take off and live your life whatever way you want. There's a shack out in the woods because that's a great way to go. Um, <laughs> great place to live with your talisman. Yeah, it's, you know, it's essentially an outhouse with, yeah. uh, you know, with a hook. Like, so go, <laughs> go, go, go live there rather than die. I think, I think uh, in my imagination, Frank went out in the woods and he, he checked out the shack and he went, yeah, I think I'm going to go in the box. Yeah. I'm better off dead. Than yeah. that. No promise in that box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, what, that's, that's my fantasy of, of what yeah. you don't see off screen. Yeah. So, but you're left, you're left, you're left with the impression that um, you're left with the impression that, that maybe boy just lets Frank go and off he goes. And which takes us to uh, which takes us to the um, ceremony, takes us to the the choosing ceremony, right? Where where mm -hmm. we get this we get this whole played out bit where it's like where you're gonna you're gonna have to decide. And of course, uh, you know, jumping to the end, Julie chooses Colony House. Family freaks out. They've chosen to live in the suburbs in the in the death house. And Julie, yeah. for some ridiculous reason, has chosen to live in the house where the craziest thing that happens is a couple of people have sex on the couch. And for some reason, she's the nutty one for choosing colony house <laughs> over yeah. the blood, the blood spatter uh, house. Like, like, <laughs> like, well, they, I think you also, we also have to talk about what Jade did. I mean, yeah, that's he right. could not have been any more Jade slash inappropriate. Yeah. And, yeah, that's right. and boy does a, a, a Frank on him where he pulls them at there, choose you're out, you know, a man yeah. protects his family and yeah. then he's part of the town and yeah, get out right. of my life. Yeah. And he, yeah. and he, he shoves Jade's nose like, like he's a cat who's made a mess on the carpet uh, in, in the grave. And he's like, take yeah. a look at your boy. You think this is made up now? And it's like, Oh damn, that's shit. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's crazy stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so that's really fun. And then of course you get, you get the stuff with, uh, with Frank and the, 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 I will say, I think I said this before that the, the scene in the jail cell, when he says here, take this talisman and go and I'll, I'll go off into the woods. Um, it was sort of a hybrid of that scene and some of the stuff that I say in the choosing day scene that was the audition. Oh wow! The audition for the role was the Christmas dollhouse stuff, but it was set in the jail cell when he's saying, "Here, take this talisman and go off." So that the, the, the script oh. hadn't quite had quite involved to what it was. Yeah, that's awesome. That's interesting little bit of trivia, but uh, 
Yeah, fun, fun scene to do. And so here's another bit of trivia, uh, something that got cut. We actually did shoot it, but it got cut. And this leads into a question you had earlier about what was Frank thinking when he's in the when he's in the box. There is a moment in the script where Frank says, um, I think this actually is in the show when he says, no, I'm, I am thinking clearly, you know, like she, yeah. my, my friend Becca, who I think was also in the diner scene, she says, you don't have to do this. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking very clearly I'm going to do this. Yeah. But then there was another little moment where he says um, a nice thing everyone could do is light a candle for, um, you know, my wife and daughter tonight in your windows. And I yeah. think that actually plays in the episode. There's a moment where he's looking out the window very early in the moments in the box and there are there are lights popping up in the in the houses in the town and that's people lighting candles for yeah. for his wife and daughter and it doesn't it doesn't get explained in any way but there is a moment where my where Frank kind of smiles a little bit where yeah. he goes where he smiles and that's what that is about it's him it's him oh, wow. seeing that people like that people are responding to what he his basically his final his final wish his final request to have them honor honor them for him uh, in his final moments and they do and he and he has a nice little moment before he gets terrified. I, and, you know one of the I, oh, I'm sorry, Lizzie. Go. Oh, I was just gonna say you know after you know you talk about the Christmas in the dollhouse mm. the because you said all that in the cemetery, I, I just, I felt like people didn't want Frank to go into the box, mm. that they did have sympathy for him because they were all going through this whole thing together. And it could have been any one of them that just decided to drink into a stupor every single day. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they just decided not to. Um, and it was just that one night, you know, whether the monsters knew that it was just Megan and Lauren home alone without Frank, Frank yeah. wouldn't have allowed that to happen. Yeah. There, but for the not. grace, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, there, there is something very, I mean, I think I can understand it on a human level. Like I think the mechanics of the show kind of work in the sense of, well, if there's this much danger at night, what do you do? What do you do right. to keep people serious? I mean, in my mind, the threat of monsters killing you is enough. You don't yeah. actually have to add another level that says, well, if you screw up, we're going to take away your hall pass privileges for a couple yeah. of weeks. It's no like, like the, the, the cost of making a mistake is about as dire as it can possibly be all on its own. So there, there is something I think a little bit faulty psychologically about saying, um, we're going to we're going to make the price of negligence so high that no yeah. one will be negligent. Well, no one really works that way. I mean, negligence is a is something that that no one realizes that they're doing while they're doing it. It's only after yeah. something terrible happens that they go, oh, shit, I should have been cleaning those filters uh, more often or whatever. Right. right? So right. It, it, it is a it is an interesting thing to reflect on, although I think and, and I and I do think that, like I say about the box, I'm not. I think Boyd maybe as a character evolves to the point where he's like, okay, that tactic just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Like we can't. And, and on top of it, this. isn't it enough that your family was killed? Yeah. Isn't that punishment enough? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. There'd be no, I don't think that anybody would reasonably be like, put that asshole in the box. Like it doesn't really, yeah. it doesn't yeah. really play, but uh, anyway, but it, but it, but it is interesting. There's, there's a march to the, March to the box, and it is a it is a lovely, um, lovely little scene. We we rushed to film it because we were trying to do it at sundown. Yeah, and it the, didn't the window, look rushed. Yeah, the window, but it didn't look rushed, but it kind of was. Like there was a yeah. sense of urgency where it's like, here's how many takes we think we realistically have to yeah. get this before yeah. we go from it being daytime to too dark Tonight. to shoot it. And yeah. we did we did the box stuff that same night, so yeah. there was a. There was there was a whole getting the monsters ready and prepping the box and putting a false back on it and stuff like that. So, I, I will but. say, um, they do a great job of wrapping wrapping it up at the end, mm. and yeah. and it's not just this episode; it's all the episodes. They oh, and I like to say, you know, you take stock of all your characters, and yeah. they start they start with Mrs. Lou at the diner, 
That's right. They work. They work their way to the Matthews. Then you know what I what I love about that scene with Mrs. Lou. She takes a bunch of apples. She brings them home, and she's you know praying for her husband. And at the end, you know, you've got Kenny with his his stray Jade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. But and it, that's where the relationship between Mrs. Lou and Jade actually begins. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And it's that moment where he's so grounded into this hell and he sees this woman who is genuinely grieving. This is not an escape room like he thought it was. Yeah. Like, this is and, real. And really for all intents and purposes, it is the beginning of the show. Yes. Like, like, like everything, everything that's happened up to this point is like introduction, action, dust settling after the action. And now the new, that montage at the end is basically an yeah. expression of this is the new normal of this place. And the fact that that new normal happens adjacent to a guy being torn apart in, in the middle of the town square where everyone can either see or hear right. going on. It, it it just adds a sense of urgency to this is the new normal. There is a there is a new kind of danger um, that wasn't here for the last 96 days. And we've settled into a complacency and now we're all on edge. You right. know, we're, we're on edge and we, we realize the danger is 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 newly kind of revitalized. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's a very elegant ending. I, I, I quite and, and and knowing that they have that relationship. And knowing that Jade has such a uh, relationship for his, for a female authority figure, which we're going to yeah. find out later, it, it just it, looking back at this, it's a it's a great great um, scene, and it, it's it, there's just all good stuff that that it comes to it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I obviously you were you were in the middle of it literally, and um, <laughs> terrifying. No, I know you said that the last time. <laughs> you you know you were, it was as real as it could be for you, and that yeah. that that's amazing. And, and, it was, and it was chaotic. And I don't know if I said this, but the, adding to the terror of it was the chaos of uh, uh, Jack directing from behind the monitor. Um, and, and calling for whoever he was seeing on the monitor to do certain things. And the problem, though, was that nobody who was actually in the scene, me or any of the, the creepy people around the box, no one ever knew if it was them that he was talking to. Because he wasn't calling anybody by name. He was just seeing people in the monitor. And he was saying, no, 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 don't go that way turn around and hold there for a second. And so there was this real palpable sense of like what's happening. And, and it really did. It kind of, in a weird way, it kind of added to this like controlled chaos of the moment. I found it, I found it to be very effective. Like I didn't know which way to turn. I didn't know which way to look. I didn't know who I should be looking at. And I, I felt, I felt the confusion and the fear in a very real kind of way in those moments. And it wasn't being afraid I was going to kill. It was like, well, I don't want to screw up this scene. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that I will. And so the well, fear was real. <laughs> it, was, well, it came across. Yeah. It came across. It was utterly terrifying. And I, I felt like I was pacing that floor with you, waiting for them to come. Then when they start looking through the holes and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you're getting a look at them up close. Yeah. Well, it was it was fabulous. And then when they all come in at the end, I loved it. Yeah, it was a great, loved it. great shot. And I had no I had no idea when we were filming it that all of that was going to become the trailer for the show. Right. Isn't that nuts? It was quite it was it was quite a thing. I remember getting messages from people saying, oh, the first trailer for the show from that you did is out and it's you. You it's all the trailer is all you. It was like being yeah. led to the led to the box and then. Harold seeing me in and the the pacing around and stuff. And I was like, wow, I, I mean, we, I had no idea while we were doing it, that that, that was going to get cut 
um, in, in, into that as like the first offering of what this show was going to look like and what it was going to be about. It was really cool. It was really neat. Yeah. I well, love when well, that happens to an actor that doesn't expect it. Yeah, it's neat. It's, it's so like thrilling. I'm glad I didn't know. I'm glad I yeah. didn't know. Yeah, it it yeah, wouldn't have wouldn't have worked, wouldn't have played the same way. Yeah, yeah it was great. Well, Bob, thank you so much. Once again, you I kill it for us. Fun. And you know, you're always welcome. You yeah. may not want to come back, but you're always welcome. It and... will never be like this long again. <laughs> no, and I and I'm grateful. I'm glad I I'm glad you didn't get me going. I didn't I didn't dump on anyone's theories or or oh Chris, I, I I'm really upset about that. Any fans yeah. by I, think I, I think I named fans by name last time and like called them out and it was like so and so. Do I'm just imagining this all yeah. my head. I know I, I yeah, no. it, it's exactly what it was. No, it. I enjoyed that so <laughs> much. I really, really did. That's part of the fun. It is. Fun. I just, you know, none of us. I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And I, I, you know, I hope you did enjoy yourself. Yes. And we're yeah, so grateful great. you came back. Yeah, it was fun. And fun. before before we end, uh, folks, if you want to just subscribe or uh, tell a friend or tell two. Also, uh, <laughs> at the time of this podcast, hopefully Bob will be um, premiering the new uh, season of King and Pond. King, yeah, King and Pond. Yeah, I think early yeah, February. Early February. There'll be a, there will be a trailer, and and I've seen the trailer, and it's really fun. And you'll get okay. to you'll get to see it. I'll post it, so you'll be able to. You'll yeah, be able absolutely. To see it. And maybe we can yeah. get your drinking buddy on here when when he actually you know tells us he's really yeah. the mole with with Donna. That um, guy. <laughs> oh, that guy. I've had enough of him. I've had. I, I hear it, and. and I'm just so happy that you guys get to you know work together so much because yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. really seem like you get along at all. I mean, in yeah. person, ha ha. Yeah. But no, I mean, no, it's it's great. It's great when you can work with friends. It's and, a great gang. Uh, we've got we've got another season of the show Good Grief too, which is co-produced and and is starring and, and co-written by Katarina uh, uh, Bacchiolis, who plays. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Kat Katarina and I have done a bunch of things together too. Like it's 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 not a huge community. It's small enough that the people yeah. who are working on stuff seriously, we all end up crossing paths and working on different things together well, all the time. Yeah. yeah, we we definitely have to get her back on because we she is another friend of the podcast as well. Yeah, and, and, and also is... again, I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, also in that show, playing one member of this grief group that we're in is Sarah Campbell who plays the monster who kills my family in, uh, in, in, in that first episode. Oh my God. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah and I have easily been in 10 projects together at least over the last 10 years. Like we're, we're, we're good buddies. Yeah. That's is awesome. she, uh, is she uh, an older person or. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I I'm thinking, I, I don't know why I even said what that. That's a dumb thing to say. Like makeup yeah. on she's the something? she's the one who appears in the window and says like the oh, older lady your, yeah, yeah it's, your, it's your grandma you want a piece of candy yeah, that's yeah. That's, yeah. that's Sarah yeah and oh, I think that's you, awesome you, you maybe see her in season two she might pop up as a monster in a couple of places and I I I think possibly they've got her back for season three but I'm not sure I, I well I'm sure. we're gonna definitely get you back for our preview because oh, awesome. I know you have all the answers yeah you know, do you're all the stuff color man. because. You know nothing, even though you were on the show, you don't get any script, but yet no. you know all the secrets of From. Yeah, and, that's right. It's the um, throw off the scent. It's to yeah. throw everybody off. Yeah. And, yeah. and folks, next week, hopefully we'll be able to get to uh, season one, episode four, uh, A Rock and, a, and Far Away. And, yeah. and hopefully we get to see more of uh, Bob's legs, evidently. You know, yeah. um, in, in a bucket, in, yeah. in a little wheelbarrow. So, in my, in my chest. But again, thank you so much. We love having you on, and thank Thanks, you again guys. for such short short notice. But although yeah. I know you were wrongly accused, we're gonna have your menaces. I mean, um, the Matthews family yeah. take us out, okay? Because I know how much you you are so upset with that but nothing but love for them they're they live in my house so i'm i hope them all the wish them all the best get you home let's go
Come on, get in your house. Let's go. Come on.